Today we're going to do just a general flow, just to get the blood pumping, get you nice and warm. So come on, get your yoga clothes on, roll out your mat and join me. Let us begin. Come to the top of your mat and find your Tadasana, your standing mountain pose, Parambek Stiti. Feet hip width apart or together depending on what feels good for your body. Hip width is generally like one fist between the feet or maybe two fists stacked together. And we want to stack our bones, ankles, knees, hips. Slightly lift the hip bones, soften the rib cage down, find length between the um, waist area there. The, the sternum is proud, but it's not poking out because we're softening our rib cage down. Bring the hands together in front of your heart center. Lengthen the tailbone to the floor, lengthen the spine to the sky. Reach up through the crown of your head and just connect in. Close your eyes. Connect to your breath. Visualize your feet spreading roots down into the ground, connecting you to your root chakra, the muladhara chakra at the base of your spine, giving you that sense of groundedness, that sense of stability, that sense of security. Take this time to set an intention for your practice, and all intentions are welcome. For me, sometimes I choose three words that I'd like to embody in my practice or in my life in general. Just repeating your intention to yourself three times. And then gently opening your eyes. Inhale, reach those hands up, stretch it up, lengthen up, try not to let the ribs pop out, reaching up to the sky, lifting and lengthening, extending and lengthening out that spine, but keep the ribs down so that you feel there's this strength, the feet are reaching into the floor, you've got the ribs reaching for your hips, your hips reaching for your ribs while your waist stretches itself away. Weird, but awesome. It means your core is engaged. You're using the strength of your inner core muscles without even having to do much at all. Fingertips spread so there's energy out through the tops of the fingers there. You might not be able to see mine. I don't think they're in frame. But let's spread them out. Reach it up. Reach up. Reach up. Reach up. Exhale. Whew. Hands down in front of the heart center. Draw those wrists down. We're right down so that you get a good stretch through the wrist. Turn the fingers towards the floor and draw the wrists up. It's always important, I think, to stretch out our wrists. Bring those fingers back up and then press them out to the other side. The wrists do so much work for us in our asana. And over to the other side so it's nice that they're nice and strong and supported and stable. Back to center. And then let's interlace the fingers. Turn those palms out. Reach it up. Keep the ribs down here. Be very mindful of that movement through the body. Exhale, release the hands. Inhale, reach up. Interlace the fingers again. Turn those palms up. Stretch it up. Keep the ribs down. Lift those hip bones. Gaze in front of you and find a drishti, a focal point, a little spot to gaze at. Up to the toes. Yes, bouncing straight away. Building strength into our ankles, lengthening out that spine. Exhale. Hands come down. Heels come down. Inhale, sweep those hands up. Grab hold of your right wrist. And then draw it out and over to the Left side, I've grabbed hold of my left to do this all the time. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so I'm reaching over to my right. But grab your right wrist, reach over to the left, inhale, draw up. Use those side muscles, use the strength in the side of the body. Reach the other hand, reach up, grab hold of it, and stretch it out to the other side. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Press through the feet, extend, release, exhale, hands down in front of the heart center, inhale, take it up, exhale, bring the hands down. Let's 
Place our feet hip width maybe a smidge wider, maybe shoulder width if that feels good. Inhale, reach the hands up, press through the feet, open up the heart, reach up and back to the upper back wall. If this doesn't feel good for you, just reach straight up, but we're lengthening, not collapsing. Exhale, hinge from the floor, from the hips, <laughs> and, and reach your chest forward. Draw the rib cage into the back of the body here, so we've got length through the back. Uh, length through the back, length through the legs. You can have your hands on your hips if you want to. You can have your hands at your waist. You can keep your hands in prayer pose. Just feel that stretch. Feel how the muscles all need to start switching on. But breathe into the back of the body so you're not collapsing. And you don't want to get a solo back. So bring the belly in. Find that Tadasana, ribs and hips chatting away to each other. Inhale, press and rise. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, reach up, extend up and back, Hasta Uttanasana, exhale, halfway, look for that halfway point. If you're really tight, this is all good for your halfway. Try not to go beyond that, even if you can, we don't have to be fancy. Draw the rib cage in, swim the hands behind you, look for length through the body, and think about softening those ribs but look for length through the body reach up through those arms if you can't reach at all maybe holding a strap here will give you more movement exhale hands down inhale peel it up dwikona asana that is two angle pose let's do it again exhale come down it's a lovely opener for the chest and the shoulders inhale those arms up looking for two angles looking for length through the back of the neck too so we're not crying the head forward and we're not dropping it down and doing weird things there look for the strength and the integrity in your body keep drawing the ribs into the body as well and then press and rise reach exhale hands down all the way to the floor now inhale come up exhale hinge from the hips release all the way down bending the knees if you need to rounding the back when you need to crown of the head to the floor if you're comfortable with straight legs go ahead and energize up through those legs run the hands up your shins inhale for a half lift and exhale bow to the floor one more time inhale half lift exhale bow to the floor let's step our right foot back and let's just rock it out, opening up those ankles. We're just checking in to see how we're going. Hey, how you going, legs, ankles, feet? Go ahead, drop your right knee to the floor. Try and stack this left knee over the right ankle or maybe even slightly behind. Try not to have that knee sort of pushing over the foot there. I like this knee to be nice and comfortable. Draw your shoulders down the back. Look for that Tadasana. Ribs and hips drawing towards each other, waist lengthening away. There's always this opposition of movement in our asana practice. Grounding to the floor and reaching to the sky. Shoulders down the back. Ribs are in and soft. Breathe. Flatten the hands to the floor or use blocks if you need them. Press that knee off the floor, press back into your heel, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Now you can use your ujjayi breath through this practice to give you that stamina. And then let's press back into a downward facing dog. Step back, no sound if you can, that means you've got to lift that leg rather than slide it, <laughs> tread it out, high down dog, how's it going, breathe into it, let's keep a nice fluid down dog here, maybe swivel into it, maybe lift one leg and explore that out, just move cautiously, move gracefully and just listen to the cues of your body. Awesome, drop the knees underneath the hips, shift those wrists underneath the shoulders, cat stretch, tuck the tail around the spine, chin towards your chest, inhaling, lengthening out the body, tailbone lifts towards the sky, chest opens and expands, gaze up to that spot between your eyebrows, your little dristy point, exhale round, inhale, 
opening up. Exhale, rounding out. Inhaling open. Exhaling round. Inhaling open. And come back to centre. Tuck the toes. You might want to shift the hands forward to palm print. Downward facing dog. Yeah. Tread it out. Step your right foot forward. Rock out the ankle just like we did before. Just breathe. Breathe, breathe. Drop down, find that alignment through that front leg. Draw the shoulders back and down, lengthen the body, keep the ribs in. Draw the um, hip point to the ribs, the ribs to the hips, stretch the waist away. It takes a while to get used to that, but when you do it, it's awesome. And it means your core is working without you having to do a whole lot of thinking about that. Lift the back leg, press back into the heel. Stretching out our hip flexors, warming the body. All right, let's step back, downward facing dog. See, lift that leg, don't slide it across. No sounds, silent step back. <laughs> and then press up to the toes around the back. And release. Press up round. Let the chin tuck. I call this mountain cat. It's kind of like cat pose, but with a down dog. And then release. Again, here we go. Up. Press the floor away. Engage into the upper back muscles there. Feel your core come alive and catch fire. One more. And up. And down. Whew. Drop the knees. Sink into a child's pose for a moment. Just hang. Let the body settle, maybe rock into it a little. Roll through, belly to spine. Sweep those arms up, extend. And exhale, hands down in front of the heart center. All right, we're gonna work our way back up to the top there. Inhale, reach up. Extend up and back. Exhale, hinge to the floor. Inhale, come up to the knees. Tuck your toes, continue to shift forward and make sure that you're comfortable here. You can take your weight down. Belly is lifted because our ribs and our hips are talking to each other. Chest and chin to the floor. Ashtanga Namaskara, eight pointed pose. Soften the pelvis, soften the tops of the feet to the floor. Drop the pelvis into the floor. Inhale, peel up, use your back muscles. Find your true cobra, no hands. And then extend up. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen through that spine. Exhale, release. Inhale up. And exhale, release. Draw the ribs to the hips. Tuck the toes. Hands at the low ribs there. I want you to come up one solid plank. Don't leave your belly behind. Ribs to hips. Ha! Up to the knees. If you're stronger... Energize those legs, ribs to hips, one solid piece, downward facing dog, tread it out. Hips to the sky, lift and lengthen, relax the head, maybe breathe into the back of the body so the ribs are lifting into the back of the body. If you're comfortable and you want to draw the ribs towards the um, thighs, you can do that, but make sure your shoulders are comfortable. Roll those armpits towards your face, bend the knees, step or walk. We won't float just yet. Just walk your dog. Boop, 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 boop. Up to the top. Hang out. Hang out. Maybe hold the elbows. Maybe rock the head out. Breathe. Relax. Release the hands. Soften the knees. Soften the hips. We're going to ragdoll up. I want you to do it safely though. Connect down through the balls of the feet. Draw the energy up through the inside of those feet. Feel the belly lift. Feel your glutes switch on as you press through the floor. Press through the floor. Keep the belly lifted. And that action should uncurl you safely. 
roll the shoulders down the back. In fact, let's just shrug them out a bunch. Deep breaths. Use your Ujjayi breath. Shrug them the other way. Roll them back and down. Find that Tadasana mountain pose. Ankles, knees, hips, stacked, ribs, soft, tailbone, lengthening, hip bones, lifting, shoulders stacked over everything. Crown of the head stacked as well, chin slightly tucked, lots of length up the back of the body. Feel the strength of your Tadasana. Let's peel our toes off the ground, spread them out. Here we go. Inhale, take it up. Extend up and back if you want to, lengthening, lengthening, exhale, hinge from the hips all the way to the floor, inhale, half lift, hands up the shins or fingertips to the floor if you're more flexy, exhale, fold, right foot steps back, drop the back knee, let's inhale, open up the wings of our hearts, shoot the chest up to the sky, draw the shoulder blades down, lift up, find strength and integrity in this lunge here. And then exhale, release, downward facing dog. Up to the toes, roll through to a plank like a wave, check it out, roll, 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 press back into your heels, press up through the arms, but especially access those upper back muscles there, ribs and hips, again, chatting to each other, drop your knees, walk those wrists back underneath the shoulders, inhale, sunbird, right arm, left leg, flex the foot, draw up from the inner thigh, belly in, because can I say it enough? Ribs and hips. They are drawing a line towards each other. Exhale. Opposite limbs. Take it up. Press through the floor. Exhale. One more on each side. Inhale up. In fact, let's round everything out. Knee to nose, elbow to hip. Inhale. Extend. Let's do that again. Exhale. Inhale. Extend. Exhale. Take it down. Other side. Sunbird. Breathe into it. Here we go. Exhale it in. Inhale it up. Exhale it in. Inhale. Extend. Keep those hips level. Exhale. Inhale. Draw up to the inner thigh. Don't collapse through your shoulders. Exhale. Take it down. Hands maybe walk forward to palm print. Downward facing dog. Tread it out. Up to those toes. Rolling round. Press back into your heels. Find your plank. Now you can modify your plank. Take those knees down as long as they're as far back as they can go. And then knees, chest and chin. Ashtanga Namaskara. Bend the elbows back. Hug the body as you do it. Chest and chin to the floor. Soften. Inhale, cobra. Look for length like a jet plane taking off into the sky. And from here, let's tuck up from here. This is another option. Tuck your toes, hips towards ribs, press, downward facing dog. Breathe into it, find that breath. Reach the hips to the sky. Let's step our right foot through, drop that back knee, inhale, wings of the heart open, extend, shoulders run down the back. Try not to like just hinge into it, like, you know, like hang on your bones there. We've got strength, we've got integrity here. We're drawing back through the right hip crease. We're hugging our inner thighs gently and towards each other. We're lifting and lengthening, lengthening our tailbone to the floor, hip bones to the sky, chest to the sky, energy out through the hands. Ta-da! Exhale, release, step to the top of your mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold, press, rise, extend. Exhale, hands down. In the pen, I might be obscuring my head. Inhale, come up, reach it up and back. Exhale, hinge to the floor. Bend your knees if you need to. It's all good. Half lift, inhale, exhale, fold. Let's step the right foot back. Drop the back knee, inhale, press up, find that lunge, look for this alignment, arms are up. As we exhale, you can sink deeper, and we're sinking down, so we're opening up our hip flexors. If that feels comfortable for you, make sure there's lift again. And then exhale, hands down in front, inhale, sweep them up. 
Exhale, hands down in front. Inhale, sweep them up. Try not to just hang down there in your hips, but use strength. Activate those glutes. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Woo, with this. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Feel that openness. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down and release. Downward facing dog. Up to the toes, round. Release, straighten, down dog. Mountain cat, down dog. Mountain cat, down dog. <laughs> Mountain cat, roll through. Press into your plank. Bring the feet together. Strong plank here. If you need to just modify and hang out in a modified plank, roll to your right side. Yep, that's right. Lift through the lower body. Roll back to center. Roll to the left side. Keep the weight even in the arms. Don't dump it all into that left arm. Back to center. Roll one more time. Back to center. Roll. Back to center. Hold. Five. Four. Maybe rock a bit forward and back. Three. Or just hold. Two. Center. Knees, chest and chin. Whoop. Soften. Cobra. Do another neck back if the neck's not comfortable. Exhale. Release. Now you can press up from Cobra like we did before. Move your hands to your hip, uh, low ribs. Otherwise, lift the hips and lift. Join your ribs and your hips towards each other. Lift. One solid piece. Now, of course, you can lift into one solid piece. Downward facing dog. Oh my gosh, tread it out. And let's take three to five breaths in our downward facing dog. Check in with your down dog. Think about spiraling those armpits towards your face. Hide them from your neighbors. They don't want to see them. Roll your triceps forward to the front of the mat, but Roll your uh, base of the big thumb and index finger into the floor. So this is spiraling through the arms. Relax the head. No tension. Yes and no. Yes and no. No tension. You can bend the knees slightly if you need to. You can have the feet wider if you need to. Look for length in the spine. Shine your hip bones to the sky. Let's set the feet in towards each other. Bend the knees. Step walk. Or if you're stronger, float silently to the top, hang out, inhale half lift, exhale fold, inhale half lift, connect to the glutes, draw the belly in and find that strength up through the upper back so the ribs are in and they're not collapsing, press and rise and that way the back is super supported, exhale, Tadasana, take a moment, hang there, We've still got the other leg to do. Mm. <laughs> and now take it up. Let's reach out to the right side. Extend out, extend, extend. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale over to the left side. Press through the feet. Use your obliques. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, hinge to the floor. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold, go ahead, step the left foot back, All right leg is out in front now. Find that strength through the body, inhale those arms up, lift and lengthen, let the shoulders come down the back. Exhale, soften into those hips, sink down into the hips if that feels appropriate, but we've still got integrity here. We're drawing the belly in because we're trying to lift our hips to our ribs as we soften our ribs to our hips. We're lengthening our tailbone down and right femur is drawing back into the uh, right hip socket so the body is squaring up. There's a lot of strength which allows us to move into our hip flexors without just kind of hanging off our joints. Breathe into it, bring those arms up. Let's inhale, extend up, and exhale, open out. Breathe the heart to the sky. If it's comfortable, maybe reach the hand to the thigh. Breathe the heart up. 
If not, you can just stay here. If you want to work the shoulders, you can do the activity we did earlier with the other lunge and sweep them around. Just find that place to let the body become steady. If you find that you're in your asana and you're laboring through your breath, you're working too hard. So just soften, take a moment, come into child's pose and then get back into it. Always work with intention and work with consciousness. Lovely energy through the sky. Maybe rain out the fingers just because it's nice. <laughs> Exhale, hands down, step back. No sound. Lift the back leg, lift the body, lift the foot. Downward facing dog. Tread it out. Reach the hips to the sky. Inhale up to the toes, tack, we're doing our mountain cat again, exhale, this time, let's find a comfortable, comfortable downward facing dog, make sure you're supported in your arms, dog split, right leg lifts, press up through that left foot, extend, keep the weight even through the arms, release, release the heel, if you can, to right if you can, left leg lifts, press up, Extend, reach out, release. Roll up and through to your plank and extend out into the plank. Breathe into it, lots of energy. Let's go ahead, walk our feet over to the right to hold out. Yep, <laughs> back to center. Walk our feet over to the left, a whole bunch. Back to center. Did I mention this was also a bit of a core workout? <laughs> back to center. One more time. Back to center. You can do this all on your forearms if you need to. And then let's do baby chaturanga. Knees down. <sighs> Lift those um, ankles if you want to. Or you can have them down. They can be together or hip width. Shift the weight forward. Bend the elbows. Shoulders no lower than elbows. Baby chaturanga. Cha Drop the feet, move into your upward facing dog. Lift and lengthen, press everything to the sky. You can skip all of this and just do cobra if you want. Now, draw those ribs to your hips. Draw those hips up to the sky. Roll over the toes, downward facing dog. Tread, tread, tread. Hips up, breathe. Feet together, bend the knees, step, walk or float to the top of your mat. Inhale, length, exhale, fold. Bend your knees, sweep the hands up, chin. Exhale, hands down in front of your heart center. Inhale, press and rise. Exhale, hands down. Take a moment, let the body settle and just your clothes if you need to. <laughs> Inhale, reach the hands up, exhale. Bend the knees, touch the ground, reach up, chair pose. Exhale, hinge. Length through the spine there, draw the belly in. Inhale, keep the ribs soft. Exhale, hinge. Inhale, up to the toes if you want to, work those glutes. Exhale, release. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands down. Whew, good leg workout. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, hinge to the floor. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Left step back, get a bit of a hip opener here. Uh, warrior two, so step your right foot back. Cartwheel those arms up. Draw back through your right rib cage. Spiral your inner thighs up to the sky. And press down through those arms. Draw back through that right back rib cage. Maybe gaze back at the hand, make sure it's in the right place. Lengthen out over the front one. Keep spiraling those thighs. Breathe into it. Exhale. Reverse your warrior. Lift and lengthen. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, extended side angle. So bringing your forearm to your knee, you can widen it out if you want to. Roll your ribcage to the sky. Shoulder blade down the back. Keep the ribs in. Keep the breath steady. Inhale, warrior two. Draw the body back to center. Exhale, cow wheel down, plank. Hello, plank. Knees, chest and chin, or chaturanga, or up chaturanga, up dog or cobra, downward facing dog. Breathe. 
<laughs> right foot steps forward, left foot turns up, cartwheel yourself up into your warrior two. Set your hips up for success. So that means that wherever they are, the knee is comfortably hanging out over the ankle. It's not rolling in, it's not rolling out, it is settled. And you'll know that just by moving those hips around a little bit. Spiral your inner thighs up, feel your glutes switch on, lengthen your tailbone to the floor, roll back through this back rib cage. Extend those arms out, press. Energize equally into the back foot as much as that front foot. And then check in because that knee's gonna wanna be sneaky and fall into center. We need to keep it nicely lined up. Hip, knee, ankle, breathe. Posture of determination. Remove those obstacles like Ganesh, the elephant god of wisdom and Clearing obstacles. Inhale into your reverse warrior. Lengthen out through the body here. Rather than collapsing, don't press into the back leg. Let's just rest. If you're pressing, bring that hand behind you. Inhale, warrior two. Extend out. Bring your forearm to your knee and extend that left hand overhead. You can sink deeper into it here. Roll your ribcage to the sky. Draw this lower Shoulder back and down the back. Lengthen and breathe. Breathe and lengthen. Inhale, warrior two. Drop the body back to center. Check alignment. Tip, 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 tip. Like a transformer. Exhale. Plank. Boo -boo. Hello, plank. Downward facing dog. Roll through your wave. Plank. Press into the heels. Roll forward. Roll back. Downward facing dog, roll into your plank, press into your heels, roll into your downward facing dog. Again, keep going. Here we go, last one. Make sure your core is strong. Here we go, plank. Five, four, three, two, one. Knees, chest, and chin to the floor. Pelvis is up. Soften. Cobra. Release. Hands by your side. Inhale, legs lift, chest opens. Breathe into it, use the strength of the inner thighs. Expand open, swim it, exhale, close. Inhale, expand, exhale, close. Inhale, expand, exhale, close. Inhale, expand, exhale, close. Lift, 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 <sighs> relax. Ba, ba, ba. Shake it out. Let me move back onto my mat. And hands to your low ribs. Tuck your toes. Head back to centre. Draw your ribs to your hips. Belly rises. Press and rise. Exhale. Into your child's pose. Rock it out. Breathe. Let's walk those elbows forward, bend the elbows, point the fingers to the sky, bring the palms together in prayer. Walk the elbows forward even more and let the shoulders run down the back. If the wrists are sore, just give them a little squeeze. Release the hands down, roll up. That was a lovely little rest. And now bring those hands up. Exhale, hands down in front of the heart center. And let's just come down onto our seat. We're going to stretch our um, 
right leg out to the side, the left leg into the inner thigh, groin area. If you need to place your hips up onto a blanket, go ahead and do that, especially if you're feeling a little bit rounded out. Bring the right hand to the inside of that right leg. Bring your left hand around behind you. Exhale, slide it out. And then gaze up. Open the heart to the sky. And now, if you want to, you can stay there. Otherwise, reach that left hand up and then reach over and grab hold of the foot. Keep spiraling your uh, chest up to the sky. Breathing into it, find what you need. If you need a strap, grab a strap. Straps are awesome. Props help you get deeper into your pose. So this is all totally doable. Boop, boop. Boop. Here. This is a pretty satisfying pose, up high with a strap. And then release that out. Extend the left leg, bring the right foot in, find that comfort in your seat again, pad those hips if you need to, lifting them onto a bath or a block or a blanket or a mat. Left hand to the inside of the left leg, right hand behind. If you've got more flexibility, you can reach right out for that thigh. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, come on down. Again, you can use that strap if you want to, however you like. Whatever works for your body. You can even just hold it like that. It's nice sometimes just to play with your props and see what you got, what you can do with it. If you want to reach all the way for the foot, go for it. But think about opening the ribcage up rather than dumping it down towards the floor. Breathe. And inhale, release it out. Extend the legs out. Wide-legged uh, dragonfly pose. Wide-legged forward bend coming up. Now for those of you who are super tight in the hamstrings and the back of the body, just having the hands behind you, breathing up. And just trying to move a little bit forward here. Opening up the heart. This is a good place to be. If you're feeling a stretch, it's all you need. Knees and toes to the sky. If you're more comfortable coming forward, then find that space. Let me move back here. Find that space for your body by lengthening through the spine first. And then exhale slowly. Don't be in a hurry to get anywhere. Your asana is a journey. Take the journey. The journey's fun. You never know what you're going to discover on the way to your destination. Breathe into it. Let the body show you the way. And you know, some days you might be able to get right down there and other days you can't. It really depends on what you've done beforehand um, and what's been going on in your life. And that, again, is all part of your practice. Just to be present with who you are and accept where you are. It's, it's all good. Inhale, walk your way up nice and comfortably. You might physically want to pick up those legs, bring them in, maybe hug them in for a moment and then drop them into our butterfly. Soles of the feet together, <laughs> knees out wide, shift the flesh from the sitting bones. And what's lovely when we're in our butterfly is we get access to our feet. So a nice thing to do and a nice thing for our feet is to pick it up give it a massage, rub it out. There are so many therapeutic points on our feet. Um, if you know anything about Chinese medicine and the reflexology points, our feet, there are points in our feet that correspond to the rest of our body. So if you take the toes as being um, uh, equivalent to the top of our head and then moving all the way down to the heels, which comes down to the, the base of our body, then you can kind of 
kind of get a sense of what's going on in the feet. There's sinus things, there's things for our face and our eyes and our toes. And as you move down just below the ball of the foot there, that's where we get into the internal um, abdominal organs. This little curve along the side of the foot corresponds with our spine. And I mean, that's just rough. I'm, I'm not a reflexology expert, so... <laughs> Just check with a map or check with an expert and get a foot massage. Foot massages are amazing. But right now you can give yourself one. So get in there. It might be sore. If it is sore, maybe a tennis ball or a, a golf ball is super painful, but amazing. Just sit in a seat or stand up. Roll your foot out on a golf ball, on a tennis ball, and wherever it hurts, don't avoid it. Just roll it out gently until it eases and then you can get deeper. Some people don't feel anything at all there, and other people it's like super painful, but just just go for it. Even if you don't feel anything, you're still opening up your feet, you're getting the circulation going. If you don't know how to massage, it's okay, it's like kneading dough, it's your own foot, you know if it feels good or not. And then something that some people feel really icky about is placing your fingers in between your toes. If you can do that, go for it, hold hands with your foot. Make friends with it. It's a lovely feeling once you're used to it. I never used to like things between my toes and now I'm like, oh, this is so good. So good. And your toes might be quite tight, but we want to open up the feet. The feet do so much for us. They carry the entire weight of our body. So it's pretty amazing, this tiny little surface. Get into the heels. Don't forget the tops of your feet. And then wake it up. A good smack, a good rub, swap to the other side, and get in there, get it, give yourself some pampering. You know if I have a headache and I've got super tight shoulders, relieving the shoulders helps, but massaging my feet is like the miracle cure for my headache. It's pretty good. So breathe into it, especially if it's painful. Check in, notice what's going on. Maybe it just feels good. Go for it. It feels really good. This way you get to experiment and feel what feels good and maybe eventually pick up some handy hints to massage other people with. <laughs> Open it up. Open it up. Spread the skin. Poke it, knead it, prod it, get your fingers and your thumbs in there, get those fingers in between the toes if you dare. Get in there, mm, open it up, hold hands with yourself. Because really our practice of yoga is about self-love, self-care. So this is really a time to just give yourself that attention that you deserve and that attention that you need from the most important person in your life, you. Without you, you're not you. <laughs> so you are the most important person in your life. You need to listen to the good advice that you have deep down inside and not all the lies that your ego tells you. And not all the stuff that everyone else around you tells you either. If it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't sit right with you, listen to your instincts. Don't worry what the other voices are telling you. All right. Lovely. Coming back to our butterfly pose. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, come down. Lift the length there. Maybe this is as far as you go, and I see this a lot, and maybe the hips are super tight. And if that's the case, then you can give yourself some support with your blocks, just so the groin isn't overstrained. So that's always a good, a good thing to do if you're finding any kind of cross-legged or wide-legged seated position uncomfortable. Now rise up from where you were, bring those knees back in, and let's lie down on the ground, slowly coming down, hug those knees in, roll around, roll the knees out, and let's rock and roll, massage that spine, keep the chin slightly tucked, 
Make sure there isn't a zip on the back of your yoga pants because that's going to bruise your sacrum. Roll and breathe. This is good for core strength. It's great for releasing the spine and the back muscles. Some people find this better holding onto the feet. Um, it's okay. <laughs> and then gently roll down. Roll down, roll down, roll down. Stretch those legs out. Bring the hands overhead. Maybe hold on to your elbows. Bring the feet together, plaster the butt to the ground. Walk those feet over to the right side. Banana Asana or Crescent Moon in the supine position. If that's okay, you can walk your shoulders over to the side as well. And if it's hard keeping the feet together, you can always hook an ankle and experiment. See which ankle feels better, gives you a better stretch with hooking it. If not, just keep it where it is. Maybe deepen that curve, draw down through your left side, flattening the pelvis to the floor. Breathe into it. And then soften into it. If it's uncomfortable having the arms over here, just bring them down. It's all good. There's no golden rules. Bring the shoulders back into center. Walk those feet back in. Hug everything in. Nose between the knee. Nice little counter pose. Release down. Release the feet again. Maybe cross the arms the other way. Walk those feet over to the left. Walk your shoulders, if you want to as well, to the left. Draw down through the right hip crease. Hang out, breathe. Let the body soften. Back to center, hug everything in, and release, hands down by your side, inhale bridge, palms face down, spiral the inner thighs to the floor, the outer thighs to the sky, press down through the heels and the insides of the feet, keep the hips, the knees and the ankles all in a lovely straight line, exhale one vertebra down at a time. Inhale up one more time. If you want to, you can walk your shoulders underneath you, clasp your hands, get a little bit higher on it there. Press, lift, then a thigh spiraling down. Little space for the chin and the chest here. Deep breaths, exhale, slowly release down. Release the left foot, hug your right leg in. If you have a strap, or a belt, or a bull, uh, not a block, or a scarf, or, or something, you can grab that now and raise your right leg to the sky. You can always use your pants. You can always grab your leg. Yoga toe lock, if you can, first two fingers between the foot. Reach that leg up, stretch it out. Breathe into it. Find length through the body. And then, fix. Extend your left arm out to the side, open the right leg out, gaze to the left and try and keep that right hip down, sorry, the left hip down. Head back to centre, gently you can soften the knee to bring that leg back up, gently bring it up, lengthen, maybe draw the leg towards you a little bit more. If it's comfortable, holding onto the outside of the foot, bend the knee, half happy baby, bringing the knee down into the armpit, top of the foot stays facing to the sky, energise down into the floor. Now all of those things can be done with that left leg bent, I forgot to mention that earlier. If that relieves any back issues, then keep the left leg bent. Otherwise, have it nice and straight, and then extend it up, swapping the hand or the hold of the strap. If you're holding the strap, 
Extend your right arm out, take the leg across the body, rolling right over onto that left hip, gazing over towards the right side. Let your shoulders melt down to the floor. Breathe into it. You can also take that leg that's extended over down to a block or a bolster or something like that if, if taking it all the way down doesn't feel pretty good because it's super tight there on the other hip in your IT band. Bring that leg back up and then draw it towards you. Look how much more closer it's coming to my face than when we started. Release the leg down, shake it up. Come into Shavasana and enjoy this moment of complete imbalance in your body. And notice the difference now between the right side and the left side. Right side always feels heaps longer. Feels like it's melted into the floor and there's just less, I don't know, less um, bulk to that leg. Super cool, I love it. All right, let's do the other side. So grabbing your strap or grabbing hold of your toes, reach that leg up. Look, that's nowhere near where my other leg was before. Lengthen up and just inch by inch. You know what, if your leg is all the way over here, that's all good. If you're feeling a stretch, then you're feeling a stretch and you're doing the job that you need to do. You can have that knee bent too. Keep the breath flowing. If it's super tight, a tiny bend in the knee is all good, but not a whole bunch of bend, because then you actually don't get much out of it unless you're coming into a happy baby and drawing it towards you. Lovely deep breaths. Extend your right arm. Open out that left gaze towards the right. Try and keep this right hip from rolling over. So you can always bring a hand there, but I find just gazing over with the arm extended kind of helps. And you can always bring that foot to a block. You can have a block underneath the thigh, anywhere there, if it's just really intense through here in the inner thigh muscles. Those are the lovely muscles. Breathe into it. And now bring those legs back up, or that leg, that one leg. Grab hold of the outside of the foot, or use your strap if you need to, grabbing hold of both sides of the strap. Draw the knee down towards your armpit. Half happy baby. You can also just hold the back of the leg if that feels better. Let's find what works for your body. Make sure things are stable and comfortable. Breathe into it. Energize down into that leg or keep it bent. Lovely deep breaths. And then extend it up and I'm grabbing the strap in the opposite hand, take the leg across, gazing over to the left. Breathe, soften, relax into it as much as you can. If it doesn't feel good, um, don't stay there so long. But if it feels good, hang out here. You can do these exercises on their own. It's a nice way to just release and open up the hip flexors and the hamstrings and the calf muscles. And then bring that knee back in. Extend the leg up. Ooh, look. So much closer to before. Lovely, lovely juggly. <laughs> find that length in the body. Breathe into it. Don't overdo it. Just find what works. And then release, let that leg come down, shake it out, find your Shavasana, notice how amazing that feels. Ah, oh, feels so good. A little bit of unevenness, but now notice that this right leg, because it's been stretched out, it doesn't have that feeling of bulkiness that the left leg had before. Just before we finish, little twist. Unless twists don't work for you, then hang in Shavasana and you're done. Otherwise, let us, and we did kind of do a twist before, but let's do a lovely, gentle, easy twist, bringing both knees in, 
hug them in. And then Ben, please give ourselves a well-deserved hug. Nose between the knees. You did a good job, Tash. Yeah. <laughs> down. Drop your knees to the right and gaze over to the left. Now you can hug those knees nice and close to get some um, length and some rounding through the spine, through the lower back. <coughs> Excuse me. Or you can send the knees down, hip level, to get some more length but no rounding in the lower back and a bit more twist through the upper back here. Yeah. <coughs> uh oh, dust in my throat. Just breathe and relax for a couple of breaths. Try and soften, release, relax, and bring those knees back up to center. Drop them over to the other side. Check in, do you want those knees close to you? Do you want them further away? Soften, close your eyes, breathe. Inhale, back to center, hug it all in. Maybe rock around. Or maybe even roll those knees a bit. Let's just drop into a reclined butterfly for a moment. Check in with the hips. Openness of the hips. Soles of the feet together. Natural curves of the lumbar spine returning. Bring those knees up, walk the feet out to the sides of the mat. Letting the pelvis rotate, those hips rotate inwards, the pelvis relax and release. Bring your awareness to your breath, deep abdominal breaths now. Slowly release yourself into Shavasana. If Shavasana doesn't feel right for you, child's pose is also acceptable. Legs up the wall, flapping fish, any relaxation pose. But if you can do Shavasana, feet wider than the hips, arms out from your side. And just lengthen through the tailbone. Flatten the shoulder blades out. Keep the chin slightly tapped to the top, tip of the nose, point straight up to the sky. Take a deep breath in, sigh it out, close your eyes.
Now you can rest here much longer. If you're ready to get up, wiggle out those fingers and toes. Deepen, lengthen your breath. Maybe curl your knees in and roll to your side for a few moments or stretch, stretch, stretch and then roll. Slowly make your way up to a comfortable seat. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.